Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick video and show you my first ever pocket letter. This took me about a week to create, uh, just because I was going a little bit slow, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I will probably do more pocket letters. So, let me unveil it. Now, this is called Pia's Pocket Chocolate. Now, I'm going to do the walkthrough first, and then at the end of this, I will put clips from me actually making this and showing you a couple of other things uh, that I created in the process of doing this pocket letter. But it's called Pia's Pocket Chocolate. I thought that was a clever, cute name because I wanted it to look like a box of gourmet chocolates and down there it says chocolate guilt free and so it's dimensional it's got sparkle and I really like it most people will do like t nine different ATC style cards in their pocket letter but I wanted mine to have a cohesive theme I did this all on one sheet and then cut the cards so it looks better as one sheet it kind of looks a little bit weird with this gap in between each sheet but that can't be helped that's the nature of the the way the pages are made so in a traditional pocket letter you have nine ATCs I haven't signed these and numbered them yet but I will in case somebody wants to get this and then break up the set or use it uh, in another way at least they'll know which series it came from and who created it. So I will do that later. To be honest, this is not going to anyone. I don't have anyone to send it to. I just wanted to try making one for the first time just to see what it was like. And so that's why I did it. So this is the front. And this is the back. Now with a traditional pocket letter. So for this one... I had it made like a box of chocolates and I was going to put chocolate related items in the pocket letter as the little goodies to give to the person it's going to but since I'm not sending it to anyone I didn't really do that I was going to put chocolate covered uh, colored embellishments chocolate jewelry and probably even a couple of pieces of real chocolate but I still filled it out just to give you an idea of what it looks like in case you've never seen a pocket letter or have never heard of one before. I just discovered them recently myself. So the first row has a couple of embellishments, little wooden embellishments, little wooden frames. If I had gone with my original idea, these would have been brown or tan or shades of chocolate. I'll come back to this later. This is a costume earring I had because I have a lot of costume jewelry that I get from the 99 cent store and a lot of it is blingy and sparkly and pretty so I put that in there the person can use these individual clusters for different projects or use this whole thing on a project as a cluster of grapes or blueberries or something like that the middle row is a sample of genuine embossed leathers now these are real leathers I got this from Zero Landfill Chicago when design houses are getting ready for their new inventory and their new samples they will donate the old ones to Zero Landfill and anybody can come and pick them up so I thought it would be cool to give the person who this letter would ideally go to some real leathers to create something with and the embossed leathers at that so very costly technique and very expensive leather the middle one would be the letter that you send to the person that would tell them a little bit about you and hopefully you will ask them some questions in your letter that would inspire them to make a pocket letter and send one back to you telling you something about them here is some sparkly gold fabric with a little plastic flower that they can use for a project 
Here is another costume earring. It's three diamonds, but each diamond is made up of lots of little flowers that can be pulled apart and used individually, or each diamond can be used, or you can cut this up any way you like on a project. This is lots of ribbon. There's an iridescent ribbon, a deep blue ribbon, a stud ribbon, and a lace and sequin ribbon. And then this pocket has metal butterflies. Uh, it's another costume jewelry piece, another earring. Um, there's probably about 10 butterflies on there. They can be pulled apart. They can be distressed, inked. They can be part of a steampunk or shabby chic or vintage, uh, vintage um, sort of creation. Or they can be left as a cluster of butterflies on something. And then this is introducing something I came up with in the process of, of doing this pocket letter and I call it a pocket locket. I have a, I'll put up another video of me making some others but the idea was to create something that coordinates with the pocket letter a little charm bracelet in the origami owl style of charm bracelets which I really like uh, and but these are all handmade by me out of clay this is clay paper and paint and that's it in a little glaze I'll use this black sparkle ribbon as a nice accent cord and the person who gets this would ideally put this on a book bag, a, a book, a, a hang it from a purse or whatever. They could even hang it from the wall. And so this <laughs> coordinates with this. Uh, it's a miniature version of the entire pocket locket. And what I could have done is put the pocket letter to put the pocket locket in here and this could have been part of this motif but I thought of the pocket locket later so this would have been this middle ATC card but of course it would be much smaller because it's more dimensional and it uh, wouldn't it couldn't be the exact same size as this so this would be like a specialty dimensional ATC card but then the person could sorry move my camera the person could you know then use this the what I like about this idea though is that you can take the pocket lock it out and you still have this to put in your file where you keep your pocket letters so I think that's an awesome idea each pocket locket is numbered and signed so this is pocket letter one which this is because this is my first pocket letter and this is pocket locket number four and I've signed it and dated it and I've done three others before I got to this one so yeah it's a cool piece of art that is specific to that person not I mean the every every pocket locket will be different um, and so I will keep track of all my pocket letters and pocket lockets like any true artist would and I'll keep a log of everything and what goes with what not every pocket letter will contain a pocket locket I'm sure uh, but if if they do I'll keep track of everything and make sure it stays together but that was just a really cool idea I came up with I'll, like I said I'll put another video up uh, showing you some of the other lockets I made and probably any other lockets I make and if you want to make some pocket lockets too I hope you do to go in your pocket letters um, you can share with me and I'll appreciate it like I said at the end of this video I'll show you me making pocket letter and the pocket locket so thank you guys for watching stay tuned for behind the scenes okay bye I just wanted to come on and sort of work on my little um, pocket letter in stages this will be my first ever pocket letter and I just wanted to just try to do one I'm um, making my own pockets and everything because I don't have those trading card pockets right now I'm just kind of like mixing up some color for the next stage of what I'm doing and um, my pocket letter is going to be um, this is the design I made sketched out it's called PS pocket chocolate so it's my pocket chocolate letter um,
pocket chocolates are going to be the healthy kind of chocolate. Well, is there any kind of chocolate that's unhealthy? I'm not going to believe it. Um, but this is kind of going to have no calories. It's just going to be a fun thing. And I'm going to try to paint this like a box of chocolates. Um, so this is the front of the box where you see all the beautiful artwork of a gourmet box of chocolate. So I painted this using Caribbean Blue from the Apple Barrel um, brand and it's number 20247E if you want to try to recreate this kind of thing. So uh, because of the angle of the camera, I'm not going to really be able to, I guess, I don't think I'll be able to paint like this. It's just a, kind of an awkward thing. Um, I'm kind of listening in the background to some of my, some of the people that I subscribe to on YouTube. I was listening to uh, Teresa, Cracked Heart Studio and to Emily today they were doing their, Teresa was doing um, I forgot what was she doing oh working on her jelly plates and Emily I believe was working on, either I was watching an old stream, maybe she was working on some tags or something. It's always nice to have someone on in the background when you're working. Lettering. It's kind of tricky. So, a lot of uh, quietness. This one concentrates. So anyway, I'm just trying to recreate this here. And I'm going to turn it off and I'll come back when this is done. I finished doing the lettering. It's not completely perfect, but um, I did make a few mistakes and got a couple of dots of dark paint. But I just touched it up with the other paint and hopefully it will dry opaque enough to cover that up. But it looks okay so far. And again, I had to do two coats, maybe two and a half on this lettering. Um, because like I said, the paint is a little bit inconsistent with the pigmentation. So it was a bit streaky. But the more layers you put on, the I guess the less streakiness you'll have. Um, and then I just did a couple of little shadowy bits on the side and bottom. Now what I'm going to work on is sort of this ornate detailing that we had on here. And yeah, we'll see how that works. And when I get that done, I will come back. The reason I'm not doing it on camera is because it will take a very long time. And I'll probably make some mistakes along the way. But also, the way my camera is set up, um, I would probably be bumping the camera uh, all the time. And I probably would be frustrated because I wouldn't be able to get a good visual. I need to get close up to the paper to be able to see it. So when I have that all... Um, sketched in I'll let you I'll come back to you and I'm using a thinner more like a liner brush to do the swirls and things 
All right, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back with the flourishes painted. Um, obviously, they are not as detailed or as perfect as the printed version, but I tried to go for a comparable look. And some of the, so yeah, some of the lines are kind of fat, and some are jagged, some are um, sort of just like half implied, but I think it gives you the overall effect that I'm looking for. Um, using this top as my little mixing palette, so, and this newspaper. But, um, yeah, chocolate guilt-free. <laughs> so that's what it is. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put like a glaze on top of um, this design. And I'm going to put a little tag somewhere over here. Um, and I will do this in some kind of a metallic and I will come back to you when I have that done. Alright, this is the final, final little embellishment to the cover. just thought it was missing something. So I added this ribbon that I found in my stash and um, you know sometimes you get those boxes of chocolate and they do have those little ribbons wrapped around each corner just for a little decorative oomph and uh, added the little metallic tag down there at the bottom so that is pretty much done for the back I had a change of plans like I wasn't really gonna paint the you can't really see it on here um, I couldn't really paint the the plastic container thing. It came out like just looking too splotchy. So this I printed it on my printer. Came out a little bit too dark, but if you were to see it in person, um, you could kind of tell what it is. And I had to put a coat of um, varnish, like matte. <clears throat> excuse me, matte varnish on it because like I said, for some reason the ink from the printer, and it's a laser printer um, it just like when you touch it it just like rubs off so in the process of putting that on I guess I don't know some of it might have smeared a little bit too in trying to brush this uh, protective coating on it but that doesn't it's not going to deter me because that's not what the car that's not what the pocket letter is about it's not about that that just hopefully will give give the idea of it being in a chocolate box and you can see it more in person than you can on on here but there's like nine little um, pockets for the for the chocolates and stuff to go into and so I added a little blue to the, the back just to give it a little bit of something and so I'll glue that down and I think what I'll do after this is cut the cards down and uh, try to start arranging them in my plastic sleeve and I will see how that goes. There's no embellishments or anything yet. None of the little things that go in a pocket letter yet. Uh, I still have to figure out what I'm going to do for that part. But this part will be done. And then I'll have it um, drying somewhere. But yeah. I'm quite happy with that. I uh, wish my printer didn't print so dark. Not sure why. And I don't know how to change the setting to make the picture print differently. So, but I'll work with it. This pocket letter is going to be for me anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll see you back when I have my pocket letter things set up.
Hi everybody, I wanted to come back and show you the next pocket locket that I'm making to go with a pocket letter that I'm doing that I will show you guys later when I finish it. Um, so this is going to be a bunch of chocolates. So this is just what I've molded in, sculpted in the clay. I'm not using any molds. All of this is hand cut and carved. And I thought I would just kind of show you some of the tools that I use when I'm making my clay pieces. So this is going to be a chocolate covered strawberry. This is going to be like a foil wrapped chocolate. This is going to be like a little candy bar. This is a chocolate covered pretzel. This is a piece of chocolate with a little button that's going to be on top. This is a chocolate cookie and another one of those like um, leaf chocolate cookies. So you have to use your imagination. I know you can't really see it now because it's just a bunch of white clay and it hasn't been baked yet so I'm going to refrain from doing a lot of touching on it because um, like I said the, the Sculpey clay is pretty soft and you know I've been handling it and right now um, it's been sitting for a while so it's cooled down a little bit but the more you start touching it the more it will warm up so I want it just like that and I've got my oven heating and I'll pop it in the oven in just a bit but for shaping clay and doing you know all of my clay work um, I'll just turn this to the side real quick I have my pasta machine which is what I use to um, I'll show you it's what I use to shape my clay and I work with very small amounts so just put it in there and you see that little bit turned into well here, let me try that again and let me put it on a lower setting because that is the number nine setting and that's the thinnest setting it goes to so it puts a really thin ribbon out and this is the number one setting so it gives you a nice thick sheet of clay to work with. So I'll turn that back around. So this is my polymer clay and when I'm working with doing miniature things I don't need large amounts so I'll usually cut off just a chunk that I think I'm going to need because you can always use more. So and you can use it over and over and over again and you really don't need tons of clay because it's so malleable so you can take a little bit and shape it the way you want like this would make a lot of charms using very small amounts of clay here so this is a sample of the sizes of clay that I work with and hopefully you can see that uh, so this is a number two strip on my pasta machine so it cuts out a, about a two millimeter two or three millimeter thick line. Um, this is the number and this is a number two so this is probably like a number four because it's about half that thickness and this is a number nine which is the thinnest my machine will go and this is even slightly thinner because I take my acrylic roller and roll out the number nine strip and I flatten it down even more keeping it right on the tile I will flatten it down to get it as thin as I can possibly get it without uh, making the clay too soft and then if it's too soft it will tear so you see the four thicknesses of clay now this is a, what I use for ribbon work or any kind of delicate ruffles and folds like these two but this is if I wanted even more delicate so this is for delicate folds and this is for 
um, you know, if you don't want your pieces to be too thick, but you want them to have a little bit of height or depth to them. And this is, you know, standard normal size. Um, you know, I don't want my charms to be more than two thicknesses of this because to me that's a little bit too big. So these are the four sizes that I work with, um, four thicknesses of clay. You might find this clay hard to work with because it's very soft, but like I said, I've been working with it for a while, so I know its properties. When it gets too soft and mushy, I know to back off and leave it alone and let it cool down a little bit before I start handling it again because you can get frustrated working with it. So here I am using my acrylic roller that I got from AliExpress that I showed you in my um, haul video. So that is this little one definitely comes in handy. Of course, I have the big uh, acrylic roller, but this little one is wonderful for small miniature work. I have my clay blade, which is what I use to do the majority of the big cutting of large shapes and chunks. So I will use this. I use this for detailed cutting. So if I'm cutting around pieces or if I'm cutting into pieces like small shapes and things like that, I will use this. Uh, or if I'm using, you know, making little ridges and things like that. So I'll use my X-Acto knife for detail work. I also will use various things to shape. This is just a bamboo, bamboo skewer that I just keep on <laughs> recycling and using. So that's good for making curves and, and small dots and holes and things. This bottle brush sort of tool that you use for sculpting, I got um, in a set of 12 pieces for clay sculpting. And I use this to add texture either side. This, I got three silicone shaping tools um, a while ago, and I use this for detail work as well. And then I think I showed, well, I don't know if I showed you guys this before. This is uh, part of the nail, yeah, I think I did, ball tool set. And this is um, part of a nail kit, and it's a really thin, pointed sort of like ball tool thing. And of course I have my clay tiles and I will use as many as I need. I gotta be careful to make sure I'm not um, squishing things because that can happen. I just wanna make sure I'm not squishing these leaves. And I have my piece of cardboard. It's in the kitchen waiting to go in the oven. So I'm going to go bake these for 20 minutes. Uh, that should be enough. I think if I go any further, it'll start to get brown, really brown. So yeah, I will start to paint these. And uh, you know, it doesn't really work out good on camera because the camera is like right here in front of me. It's my hand on the camera and I will be bumping it a lot. So I will come back and show you these after it's painted. All right, or when I'm ready to assemble it and put it into my pocket letter that I'm going to show you guys later. But I just wanted to give you an idea of you seeing the clay pieces before they're baked. And it will be very different when it's decorated. This one is gonna be baked a couple of more times because I have some other things. I just wanna get this base baked and then I'm gonna put some stuff on top of it. All right, so yeah, these are my chocolates that are going into my chocolate pocket locket. <laughs> and I'll see you guys later. Hope that was a little helpful. If I had a better camera angle and stuff like that, I could show you guys me making the clay, but it's impossible with the way this camera is set up right now. So hopefully this gives you some idea. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. All right, I'm back. This is just the first stage of painting. I am using this Apple Barrel Brown. It's pretty thin paint, which can be a little frustrating and annoying. But if you take your time, see like this one, that's one coat. It's very thin. 
the rest of these have several coats and this one will need several coats more still probably two more coats um, I might do two more coats on all of these but you can see it's starting to come together you can kind of tell that that's a pretzel rod and you can tell that's like a little candy bar starting to come through the bottom half of the cookie and you can tell that's going to be a chocolate covered strawberry so I'm going to keep going and slice or splice in some more videos as I continue to go on I'm looking forward to see how it all turns out myself okay I'll see you in a bit okay so I pulled out of quite a few more paints Let me put the top on this one and this is the progress so far so hopefully you can see it taking shape uh, I've been using this as my palette and as you can see these are just drops of paint very minute drops of paint for this tiny 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 little artwork So we're coming along, and the next time I show you will probably be the finished product. Okay, so I will see you in a bit. Okay, hi everybody, I'm back. This is the final outcome. Uh, everything has been nicely painted and um, all of the different accessories and things put on. I just tacked it down with a um, tiny little bead of glossy accents to keep it from falling like the other ones did. So now you can see all of my chocolate pieces. Hopefully the lighting is okay. Um, so here we have one of those chocolate leaf cookies so you can see the cookie is one of those nice little green cookies and it's been dipped around the edges in chocolate this is white chocolate with a chocolate little candy on it this is a chocolate I mean this is a, a yeah white chocolate pretzel with colored sprinkles so hopefully you can see that And this is a milk chocolate and dark chocolate uh, candy bar with nuts on the top. And in this one, the dark chocolate is nice and glossy um, because it's more like a glaze. This is a chocolate cookie with white icing. This is a piece of chocolate in foil, probably just milk chocolate, and this is the chocolate covered strawberry. So it was a lot of fun to do. Now I'm going to arrange them into their locket. And this is the base and I've already done the top and put all of the rhinestones around it I just used my glossy accents and I have a bunch of these wheels of tiny flat back rhinestones so I just picked a color that I thought would match with with these and so since it's blue I thought dark blue rhinestones would match. So what I use to stick these down is just a bead of tacky glue. I'm almost out of this so I keep it I'm keeping it upside down so the glue is already at the nozzle. And what I'm going to do is arrange these and uh, show you when I have them in the the locket. I already put the bail on so yeah and I put a strip of um, sukwang around the edges 
and I got this one eighth inch Suquang um, tape, um, which came in really handy because this is a, a narrow bezel and it's perfect. It's one eighth of an inch perfect, so um, that'll be great. And I will I will come back and show you like finally, finally, finally all this stuff put together, which will be the pocket uh, the pocket letter and the completed pocket locket but I don't know if I will put um, a you know necklace or tether or anything on it yet because I'm not sure what that will look like so I'll show you the finished project of both of those and hopefully you'll find it fun and interesting enough and you'll be curious and want to do some of your own and leave me some video links and shout shout this video out and share it because I would love to see what you come up with too alright it doesn't like I said it doesn't take a lot of uh, supplies it takes a little time and creativity and patience but the end result is fantastic because yeah I love this this came out really nice oh and the sprinkles I don't know if I showed you um, I made those out of this so these are some really tiny 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 little canes of colored clay that I rolled out to really tiny little thin strings baked them in the oven and then I just crushed them up to give me like sprinkle sort of things that I could put on like little cakes and, and candies and stuff like that so that's how I got those and it's just tiny little sticks of clay that have been chopped up Alright, I'll see you in a bit.